Hi guys! Good day! It's me, Teacher MJ. Our topic for today class, it's all about the hyperbola, transforming general form to standard form. So without further ado, let's do this topic. So this is already part 2 of our video class and this will be quite complicated. So do not be worried class, we will be answering this one step by step. Now for the part 1 of our video, we answered numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4. So feel free to see the link in the description down below with regards to the part 1 of our video class. Now for the part 2 class, we will be answering number 5. If we have a lot of time, we will be answering number 6. Then next will be number 7. And this will be quite tricky class for number 6 and 7. Especially for number 7 class because these, these are large numbers. Alright, so we transform this general form into standard form. Just to remember the standard form. This will be the standard form of hyperbola. So in this scenario class for number 5, our h and k will not be at 0, 0. So this will be our equations. So we have quantity x minus h squared over a squared minus quantity y minus k squared over b squared equals 1. Or you can have this equation. So quantity y minus k squared over a squared minus quantity x minus h squared over b squared equals 1. Now always remember this one class that in hyperbola, the positive quadratic comes first before the negative quadratic term. Okay? The positive quadratic term. What do you mean by quadratic term, sir? A number together with a variable with the exponent of 2. So it should always come first before the negative quadratic term. And your a is always on the left side of the equation. Okay? Left side of this x squared and y squared. Check this one out, class. A is always on the left side. All right, so let's start answering number five. So once again, always remember that the positive quadratic term always comes first before the negative quadratic term if you're transforming that into standard form. Since we have negative x squared, negative 9x squared, so therefore this positive 16y squared comes first before this negative quadratic term. Positive 16y squared then positive 64y and then we have negative 9x squared then positive 18x equals so transpose this number from left to right the constant plus transpose this one from left to right this is negative it will be positive 89 so once again we have 16y squared followed by 64y then negative x squared followed by positive 18x. Now, once again, before doing the completing the square, you need to check first class if you can factor the y variables as, as well as the x variables. Can we factor 16y squared and 64y? Can we factor this out? Yep, we can factor this out by 16. Now, once again, class, always remember this one. Mostly, class, you just factor this out by the number before y squared. Mostly, class. So, can we factor the numbers 16 and 64 by 16? Yep. We can factor this out by 16 because we can divide 16 by 16. We can also divide 64 by 16. You find the GCF class. Greatest common factor. So, the GCF for 16 and 64, that would be 16. Then, you divide class. 16y squared divided by 16. So, 16y squared divide 16. 16 divided by 16 is 1. Y squared divided by none, simply copy Y squared. Or, that would be Y squared. 1 Y squared is just the same with Y squared. So, that would be Y squared. Alright, and then this one, 64Y divided by 16. So, 64Y divide 16. So, 64 divided by 16, that is 4. Y divided by none, copy Y. So, positive 4Y. Alright, and then you put a space class because we need to do the completing the square in this variable y. So you can also check if your answer is correct in factoring okay, by the distributive property. So 16 times y squared, that's 16y squared. 16 times positive 4y, that's positive 64y. So always check your answer class if, you, if, you're, if, you're the, if the factoring is correct. So you can check it by the distributive property. So always check your answer class if your factoring is correct by the distributive property. Alright, so this one class. Can we factor this out by negative 9? 
So once again, mostly class, you factor this out by the number before x squared. So you need to factor this out by negative 9. So can we factor this out by negative 9? Let's check. Okay, divide this one, 9x squared, 9x squared, negative 9x squared divided by 9. So negative 9x squared divided by 9. So negative 9 divided by negative 9, that's positive 1. X squared divided by none, copy x squared. So negative divided by negative is positive. Positive 1. Then x squared, copy. Or you can just simply write x squared. Alright, so once again class, when you factor this out, mostly class, just simply copy the number before x squared or the number before y squared. And then divide class, 18x divided by 9, so positive 18x divided by negative 9. So positive divided by negative, unlike signs, it should be always negative. Or you can just, just erase positive class, understood that it will be positive. So positive divided by negative that's always negative. x divided by none. Copy x or a neg positive 18 divided by negative 9. That's negative 2. x divided by none. Simply copy x. Alright, so negative 2x. Then you put a space because we need to do the completing the square. Equals 89. Alright, so check class if we can. Check your answer class if it's correct. Okay, by distributive property, so negative 9 times x squared, that would be negative 9x squared, negative 9 times negative 2x, negative times negative is positive, 9 times 2x, that's 18x, positive 18x. So therefore, your factor is correct. Okay, you factor it out correctly. Alright, so next step class is we do the completing the square. So to do the completing the square class, this will be the formula b divided by 2 quantity squared so what will be the number that we will be adding here okay and this equation for y so that will be the, the formula b divided by 2 quantity squared and our b is beside y this one beside the linear term for y y with the exponent of 1 so our b is beside y that will be 4 divide 2 squared so 4 divided by 2 that is 2 then squared 2 squared, it means 2 times 2. You multiply by this 2 by itself twice. So 2 times 2, that is 4. So, plus 4. Now, once again, class, be careful with this one. Do not add. Once you add 4 on the left side, you also do that on the right side. But, it will be quite complicated, class, because you will not be adding 4 directly on the right side. Why is that, sir? Because this is not our original equation, class. Our original equation is 16y squared plus 64y. We factor this out by 16. Therefore, if there's no 16 here, once you get 4, go ahead, class. You add 4 on the right side. You get 4 on the left side of this equation, equal sign. You get 4. Now, you also add 4 on the right side. But, this is not our original equation, class. We factor our equation by 16. Therefore, the thing that we will be adding on the right side that would be the product of 16 and 4. So you need to multiply this one plus. So plus 16 times 4. Alright, I hope you get that one class. Do not add 4 directly on the right side. It should be the product of 16 and 4. Because you factor this equation by 16. This is not the original equation. The original equation was this one. 16y squared plus 64y. Alright, and this one. So... What will be the number here that we'll be adding? So once again, use the formula b over 2 quantity squared. So our b is beside x, beside the linear term, x with the exponent of 1. Of course, our b is negative 2. So negative 2 divided by 2 quantity squared. So negative 2 divided by, divided by 2, that's negative 1. Negative divided by positive is negative. 2 divided by 2 is 1. Negative 1 squared. So negative 1 squared plus, do not forget, it means negative 1 times negative 1. Alright, or you can write it this way, negative 1 times negative 1. And negative 1 times negative 1, that is positive 1. So you will add positive 1. Now once you add positive 1 on this equation, you will not add 1 directly on the right side. You always check if you factor this equation. Yep, we factored it out by negative 9. Therefore, 
the thing that we will be adding, it will be plus, okay, we don't have enough space. Let me write it again. This will be 89, then plus 16 times 4, and then this will be plus negative 9 times 1. Okay, we don't have enough space plus. Let me write it again. So this will be x squared, okay, minus 2x plus 1 equals 89 plus 16 times 4, then plus the product of negative 9 times 1. Alright, so let's simplify class. So this will be, okay, this will be copy 16. Now, this is a perfect square trinomial. We make it into square of binomial. So, get the square root of y squared. Get the square root of the first term. So, the square root of y squared, that is y. And get the square root of 4. The square root of 4, that is 2. Then, you copy the sign of the middle term. Plus, you put quantity, then squared. That's it, class. This is actually the same, class. Even if you multiply this one, by FOIL method, you will get this answer. Okay, let's try class. Y plus 2, quantity squared, it means Y plus 2 times Y plus 2. Okay, so this is actually the same class. Y plus 2, quantity squared, it means you multiply this equation by itself twice. So using the FOIL method, if you still remember, first, Y times Y, that's Y squared. First, outer, inner, last, outer. Y times positive 2, that's positive 2Y. Inner, 2 times Y, that's positive 2Y. Then last, 2 times 2, that's positive 4. Combining like terms, this will be Y squared plus 2 plus 2 is 4. Simply copy the literal coefficient plus. Copy Y plus 4. You will get the same answer plus. Alright, so that's, that's why when you do the completing the square, your answer is a perfect square trinomial in which you can make it into square of binomial easily by getting the square root of the first term then square root of the last term you copy the sign of the middle term you put quantity then square alright and then minus 9 so once again this is a perfect square trinomial we make it into square of binomial so get the square root of x squared that is x Get the square root of the last term, square root of 1. So the square root of 1, that is 1. You copy the sign of the middle term, copy negative sign, then squared. That's it, class. This is a perfect square trinomial. We make it into square of binomial. Equals, so copy 89, then 16 times 4, that is 64. So plus 64, then negative 9 times positive 1, so negative 9 times positive 1, that's negative 9. Alright, so this will be negative 9 because this is positive, this will be positive, the negative 9 times 1, that's negative 9, and positive times negative, that is negative. So copy negative 9. Alright, so negative 9. So this will be 16, then copy y plus 2 squared, minus 9, then x minus 1 squared equals, so combine this one class, then subtract it by 9, so 89 plus 64, this will be 9 plus 4 is 13, 3 carry 1, 8 plus 1 is 9, plus 6 is 15, 153 minus 9, okay, add 89 plus 64, that's 153 minus 9, so, borrow 1, this will be 4, this will be 13, 13 minus 9 is 4, bring down 4, 1, 144. So, 89 plus 64, that's 153, minus 9, that's 144. Alright, so we're almost done, class. So, once again, our equation, it should be, on the right side, class, it should be equals to 1. So, you, will, you need to divide the equations by 144. Why is that, sir? Because 144 divided by 144, that's equals to 1. So, divide the equation by 144. Also, this equation. And this equation. 
So divide by 1 for 4. Now check. Can we divide 16 by 1 for 4? Can we divide 16 by 1 for 4? Nope, we cannot divide 16 divided by 1 for 4. That cannot be. We got a decimal answer. But can we reduce 16 and 1 for 4? 16 over 1 for 4. Can we reduce? Yep, we can reduce it by 16. We can divide 16 by 16. We can also divide 1 for 4 by 16. Alright, so we can reduce this one. So 16 divided by 16 is 1. How about 1 for 4? 1 for 4 divided by 16. Let me check. 16 times 9. 16 times 9. 9 times 6 is 54. 4 carry 5. 9 times 1 is 9 plus 5 is 14. Alright, 144. So therefore, 16 divided by 16 is 1. 1 for 4 divided by 16. That is 1 for 4 divided by 16. That is 9. Because 9 times 16, 9 times 16, that is 144. Alright, and this will be, how about 9 and 144? Can we reduce? Yup, let's check. Can we divide 144 by 9? So, 14 divided by 9 is 1. 1 times 9 is 9. Subtract. 14 minus 9 is 5. Bring down 4, 54. 54 divided by 9 is 6. 6, does, 6 times 9 is 54. Subtract. This is 0. So, this will be 16. So, 144 divided by 9, that is 16. So, 9 divided by 9 is 1. 144 divided by 9 is 16. Alright. All set. Plus. So, let's, let's final our answer. So, this will be... Okay, so this will be, let me raise this part class. We don't have enough space. So our final answer class, almost done. So our final answer will be, so this is 1. So just ignore 1 class because understood that there's 1 here in every parenthesis. So our final answer will be y plus 2 over 9. So do not forget squared. Minus... You can put the minus sign in the middle part. Minus, understood that there's 1 in every parenthesis. So just ignore 1. And parenthesis, x minus 1 squared over six, 1 for 4 divided by 9. That's it. That is 16. 16 equals 1 for 4 divided by 1 for 4. That is 1. That's it. Let's all set for number 5. Quite complicated, right? But we need to answer this one class step by step. So, if the, vert, if the teacher will ask for the vertex, vertex, that would be H and K. So, your vertex class is always, okay, let me write it here. Vertex, H, comma, K. So, your vertex class, your H is beside X. Always remember, class, that your H is always beside X. Now, if this is negative 1, you get the additive inverse. So, your H is positive 1. And your k is positive 2. Your k is beside y. Check the equation class. This will be our equation class. We have quantity y minus k squared. So y comes first before x. So this will be our equation. So your y is your k is beside y. So your k is this is positive 2. You get the additive inverse. Your k is negative 2. That's it, class. Now if you want to get the value of your a, your a is always on the left side of this equation okay a this this will be a and this will be b so a squared equals 9 so from the equation plus it says a squared do not forget this will be a squared and our a squared is equals to 9 so get the square root extract square root both sides so your a is 3 square root of 9 is 3 and your b so b squared equals 16 to get the value of b extract square root both sides and your b is 6 square root of 16, that is 4. That's it, that's all set. Alright, so I hope you understand this one class. So that's it class, that's how you transform general form to standard form. So if you like this video, do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. You share it to your friends and to your classmates so that we can help more students. Have a great day class, goodbye for now, bye-bye.